Good morning. Welcome to DC3. My name is Jeff. You can have a seat here for a moment. Hey, you guys are in for a treat today. You know why? Because today is Raised to Life Sunday, one of my favorite days of the year. Actually, this is a very special day for me because it's almost two years ago when my family attended DC3 online for the very first time, and it was a Raised to Life Sunday. And we knew right then that this was going to be our church because we want to be a part of a church where God is changing people's lives and changing their story. And that's what I want you to know if you're here for the first time today. Everybody has a story. We all come here and we have our own story, our own experience, things that have happened, our struggles in our lives. And we come here with our story, but I want you to know that God can change your story. No matter what. Today, none of this would be possible without Jesus Christ. When we need to get there, we need to stay there. And, and so today, this is not just a watch. This is a participate. This is I have been raised to life. And now we get to watch other people commit and celebrate that this morning. And I'm so excited. We're excited because we got to introduce Eric in student ministry to you a few weeks ago. And now this morning, the kids ministry, which is alive and well, is getting raised to even a greater level right now. I want to introduce to you our brand new kids pastor and his amazing wife and family. Would you welcome to our stage, Josh Danielson, Sandy Danielson, and Jonah, their son Jonah. Welcome to the stage this morning. Welcome, Josh. Josh, anything you want to welcome everybody this morning? Yeah, just thank you so much. We've been here for a couple weeks already. I've already gotten to meet a handful of you guys, and we are so excited to be here. Uh, this place has already felt like family in just a few short weeks we've been here. We're excited to jump in. Love kids. Our heart is to see kids have an authentic relationship with Jesus. It's not just while they're in school, but it lasts until they're well, well up in age. Um, and we're excited to, to have a part of starting that in their lives here. And so this community is right for it. We're excited for it. And we thank you so much for welcoming us in, opening your arms and, and making us feel like family already. Race to Life services because we literally lay the foundation of our faith. We celebrate through two of the ordinances that Jesus gave us, the Lord's Supper and Baptism. He said, do these things. Do these things. Because see, he is, he's the chief cornerstone. This is something as a child, man, when I'm growing up and I'm struggling through my faith and I'm struggling through my family and I'm trying to figure out what's true and what's not true, I would, I would continually be pointed, God would continually bring me back to this truth that Jesus is the chief cornerstone of my faith, of my foundation, of my, of my life. And if that is settled, if I can start there, then, then he can build something from that. Right? And so as, we, as we're here with was celebrating these amazing things, these amazing times, and people are telling their stories, and we get to reflect and remember, oh man, we recognize the fact that our hope is built on Jesus, his blood, and his righteousness. Let it soak in as we sing it. There was a particular church in the first century in the New Testament in the city of Corinth that was far from perfect, far from perfect. And the Apostle Paul wrote them a couple letters we have in the New Testament of our Bible, 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. And 
in Paul's response to them, you get just a little bit of an idea about how messed up they were. There were lawsuits that were going on inside the church. There were inappropriate sexual relationships, to say the least. Um, they were just a messed up people. And so, so the Apostle Paul writes to them in 1 Corinthians and you know, kind of calling them out for, for their sin. And if you read this, this whole letter, it kind of follows this trajectory and it kind of culminates in this chapter that, that a lot of us might be familiar with, even if you've been to a wedding or something. First Corinthians 13 is the love chapter where he says that love is the greatest of all. But just before that, in First Corinthians chapter 11, he really calls out the Christians who are gathering there for being driven more by their own agenda, by their by their ego and, and their pride. And Paul says, that should not be how we come together and we celebrate the Lord's Supper. We celebrate communion. And that when we do that, we check our ego at the door. We leave our agenda outside. We might not all see things the same way. We see things differently. We might even believe things a little bit differently. But Paul says that when, when you come to the communion table, to the Lord's Supper, you set all of that aside, you lay all of that down at the feet of Jesus. Hi, my name is Avia Jardulo. Hi, my name is Kim Palladino Lynch. Hi, my name is Frank Lynch. Hi, my name is Naomi Pizzardi. My name is Grace Johansson. Hi, my name is Mia Johansson. Hi, my name is Jackson Minnie. Therefore, if, any, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, and I watch this, Paul saying this in representation of Jesus Christ, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, Rather, in humility, watch this, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. I thought I knew it, and I'm making sure I don't misquote scripture. So here's what I want to do in the end of today. Today you have seen the power of God to transform lives. Watch this, man, to heal people. You've seen the power of families that raise their kids, as the Bible says, in the fear and the admonition of God. And that's not an un unhealthy fear where you go, God is looking to zap you, lightning you, hit you, kill you every time you step out of line. It's a God that understands what's best for Steve, what's best for Jeff, what's best for Stephanie, and he wants, as any good mom or dad would do, keep you going on the right path. We don't ask anybody that's new to give of their finances. Of course, worship and giving is a privilege for us that are believers. And if you're a believer and you're new and you want to give, then by all means, worship the Lord. It's not about DC3, right? 
Turn to somebody and say, it's not about them. It's about him. That's, that rhymes. That's good. Write that down, Jeff. Um, and so if you want to give at the exit doors, you can give or give out in a given center or you can give online that would be an awesome thing thank you thank you for those faithful family members that continue to support this ministry so that that can happen amen that's good give god a big hand for that all right We're going to be doing what we call the DC3 Reunification Project. And let me just tell you about this. We're going to tell you a lot more about it tonight at the family meeting and going forward in, in some email communications. But what we're doing, Pastor Eddie's doing this. We're excited about this. We're going to be on our Sunday morning services reunifying everybody for worship. 